Judges. That Samson was so disruptive to the Philistines that they made a deal with Samson's own people for them to hand Samson over to them. Delivered him over to his enemy. And I'll tell you in this house, there's some of you that feel that way. God, I've prayed, I've prayed. I, I don't know why I feel like I'm so bound up. I can't. And some of you, you the enemy has just warped your mind into thinking that this is how you're going to have to live the rest of your life. But here's what happens in Samson's story. As the enemy drew closer and closer, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. You see, the enemy thought they had him. But what they did not realize is when the Spirit of the Lord moves upon a child of God, it's not a surrender for you. It's a trap for your enemy. Hear me. When your enemies are close, that's when you can confront them. I tell you, in the darkest hours of my life, that's when you got to stand up in the authority of Christ and say, devil, I know who you are, but I know whose I am. And you have no authority to chain me up, to bound my life. Hear me tonight. They bound Samson's body, but they did not shut his mouth. And you can say, I can't worship, I can't praise, but you can open up your lips. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to clap. You don't have to jump, but you can say, Jesus. Save me.
I just want you to begin to pray for your brother and sister on your left and your right, whatever it may be. I just want you to just declare the word of God over them. Jesus, I know that the enemy says he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus, you've come to give us life. Life more abundantly. Open up your mouth. Come on, let me hear you, saints. Pray for your brother and sister tonight. in this place. Hallelujah. I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have our worship team come and they're going to sing just a little bit. But I'm going to tell you He's here and He's longing for you to worship Him. I can remember can remember when I was a child uh, they would sing brother Patrick they'd sing and they'd sing and the power of God would just begin to move we was talking about the other night about the old timers they would when uh, they was done shouting the, the, the young kids would come up front and they would pick up all the bobby pins and everything that the ladies had lost that night and uh, but I'm going to tell you I got to get past this part and then I'll be able to preach. More than anything in this world right now, we need a move of God. We need a move of the Holy Spirit. We need His divine direction. The things that our young people face in schools, and not just in schools, but outside, wherever they may be, the enemy is not slack in his pressing. He's not slack in trying to distract them or to persuade them to get away from God but right now he is doing everything he can to push our young people out of the house of God we need a move go ahead and say
name of the Holy Ghost. She's been at the altar weeping and crying and crying out to the Lord. She's come to me in the gym, in the kitchen, talking to me about how she's seeking the power of, of God, and seeking the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you something tonight. He's rescued some of you in here tonight, and you've got a reason to praise Him. You've got a reason to worship Him.
Brother Jade, before service, I said, I don't have to say three words. I just want the Lord to have his way in this service. I just want to see the Spirit of God move in the young people in this service. Hallelujah. We can look in Scripture, and we can find from the very beginning. In the very first book, the very first verse, we can find that the Spirit of God was in our midst. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. 
And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God moved across the face of the waters. We need the Spirit of God to move once again in America. We need the Spirit of God to move once again in our nation. Hallelujah. Not just on the ground that that we can walk on, but the grounds that we may not be able to get to. We need the Spirit of the Lord to move. I want to thank Brother Jade, Pastor Jade, Pastor Ronnie, for giving me the opportunity to to come and speak tonight, to be a part of this. Uh, It's very humbling. I got a lot of roots. In this house, uh, I got a lot of roots here. God's been able to bless me to uh, take what I've been taught in this place, and uh, He's blessed me to be able to sit with Pastor Wayne and help him in his ministry, and. Uh, we're seeing the fruits of our labor, <clears throat> and I'm so thankful to be a part. I just want to be a part of God's move. We can't do anything without Him, but with Him, we can do everything. I've never been able to preach in this place without crying. My grandfather told me many years ago, he said, son, he said, if you ever lose that spirit, just quit. He said, if you ever lose that spirit, you just check yourself. Tonight, I want to talk a little bit simply about we need a move. The last uh, several weeks I've been um, teaching and preaching on Wednesdays about the power of God, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. And I, I thought I was going to get away from that and the Lord won't let me. But tonight I want to talk about the gifts of of God. See, we've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. How many agrees with that? We got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now I know some uh, some people call it the Holy Spirit now, uh, but tonight I'm going to use the Holy Ghost. Because that's my heritage. That's, that's what I grew up with. It was the Holy Ghost. Amen. When the Holy Ghost began to fall amongst us, things began to happen. Things began to change. People's lives were no longer the same, but they was touched. And, and they walked out differently than the way that they come in. Hallelujah. And I want to look, uh, the Lord's laid three different things upon my heart there's motivational gifts there's ministry gifts and there's manifestation gifts and tonight I want to talk about those three things now I tell them all the time and and I'm I'm going to really struggle tonight because this platform this desk it's a little bit smaller than the one I'm used to (laughs) and uh I got a lot of notes, 
And I tell them at the home church, I said, I struggle keeping my notes in order. And, well, God's going to help me. Praise God. Uh, motivational gifts, ministry gifts, and manifestation gifts. We can look in Scripture in Romans 12 and verse 6. It says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion, pro, proportion of faith. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exalteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Motivational gifts. This is the temperament. This is your personality. Precious Heavenly Father, I come before you right now, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity that you've given to me to speak this word tonight. And Lord, I pray that you'd use me as a willing vessel. Lord, that I could speak into this congregation that would strengthen them. God, that would draw them closer to you than what they was when they walked in. God, remove me from this picture and let your Holy Spirit lead me and guide me tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. There are several gifts in those first few scriptures that I read. There's the gift of prophecy, the gift of ministry, the gift of teaching, the gift of exhortation, giving, and administration, and the gift of mercy. God the Father has given us motivational gifts. There are seven gifts in Romans chapter 12, 6 through 8. These gifts are given to us at birth. But it's our responsibility to develop the gift that was given to us. You didn't hear me. We were given gifts at birth. And it's our responsibility, it's our duty to make sure that that gift that God give us at birth, it's up to us to bring it to fruition. It's up to us on how he's going to use us. See, we can put limits upon ourselves. When God really wants to push us farther than where we are right now. He, he really wants to use us and do something. But... We get distracted by everything around us. And when we begin to get distracted by everything else around us, we put ourselves in a box and we begin asking, what will they say? How will they react if I do that? Just like Brother Jade was talking tonight. Uh, uh, it's, in some places it's not common to see people shout. We can be in a Pentecostal church but it's not common to see those gifts. When you begin speaking, that's a gift. When you begin worshiping, it's a gift. And God wants to use your gift. Prophecy is a person with a temperament a personality of a prophet. This person is moved to reveal unrighteous actions or motives by presenting God's truth. That's the first gift that was mentioned. The second gift is serving. This person is motivated with the desire and to demonstrate love by meeting practical needs. Teaching. This person has great desire to, to speak out and to clarify the truth. 
exhortation is a motivated to build and stimulate the faith of others. We're to encourage one another. We're to hold each other up. When we see our brother falling, we're to, we're to go to him and do our very best to pick him up. When we see a, uh, our sisters in need, it's, it's, it's up to us to go to them with the best of our ability and to pick them up and encourage them. There's too many people today that they come into the house of God and they serve him for, for a short period of time and they get on fire to do something for God and all of a sudden a battle comes and, and it hits them and, and it knocks them down and the next thing you know, they've walked out the door and they've been forgotten about it and, and nobody, nobody really realizes or what they've done or where they've been or what they're going through, but it's up to us to recognize those things. We are to encourage one another. Fifth is giving. This person is motivated to use assets in a profitable way for helping others. Administration is motivated by the desire to organize others for the achievement of a common goal. And seven is mercy. This person is motivated by identifying and healing the hurts. Of others. Gifts. Each one of us in this house has a gift. And there's no time like right now to let God use that gift. Those were motivational gifts. Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, verse 11, you'll find ministry gifts. It's your office, it's your calling. In verse 11, chapter 4, and verse 11 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. These are ministry gifts. These are are specific things that God has placed within us that is simply for the edifying of the church. It is simply to lift up, to build up the church, to build up the body of Christ. It's not just one but it's several. One man can operate in all the gifts, but God doesn't intend for one person to control all the ministry gifts. But he wants each one of us, because it's been birthed in us, to step outside of our comfort zone and say, Lord, I'm not real sure what you're calling me into, but I'm going to be a willing vessel and you just pour it out on me. What is an apostle? One sent forth with authority, lays the foundational truths, establishes new assemblies, and humble and sacrificial. Ministry is accomplished by signs and wonders and miracles. A prophet, meaning one that speaks forth a divine message, lays foundational truths, gives divine revelation, foretells future events, exhorts, confirms, and conceals the brethren. An evangelist, meaning a messenger of good news, 
has a special ministry to those that are lost and sick, has an emotional apparel, should be diligent in the word, and a pastor, meaning shepherd. A shepherd for the local church, listen to this. A pastor is a shepherd for the local church, discerns false ministries. The good shepherd is willing to lay down his life for the sheep, the condemnation of false pastors and other shepherds. Because unfortunately, the time and hour that we live in, not everybody out there is who they portray themselves to be. So we need a pastor, we need a shepherd that will stand before a congregation of people and warn them that not everything is what you think it looks like it is. Not everything walks the way they say they walk. Not everything talks the way they portray themselves to talk. I know a lot of intelligent people that are much smarter than I, and I'm going to tell you, they have no more anointing than I don't know. I just don't. But we need somebody to stand in the day and hour that we live in and say, this is not of God. I know I'm, I'm being bold tonight, but I promise I'm getting somewhere because we need a move. We need a move of God like we ain't never seen before, Brother Jane. We need the Holy Ghost to come in our services and, and to visit us just like he has tonight. And the only way that we're going to see that move is when we come into God's house and we set ourselves pure and we set ourselves aside of everything else and we say, you know what? I don't care what the world's doing. It doesn't matter to me what they're doing out there. I don't care what anybody else thinks of me, but I'm going to walk into that house tonight and I'm going to receive something from God because I come with a made up mind that he's going to fill me with the Holy Ghost that his power was going to come down and it was going to touch me and it was going to move upon me and the only way it's going to take place is if we begin to move in the gifts that God has given us hallelujah Ministry, gifts. Ministry, gifts. There's ministry everywhere you look. Everywhere that your feet tread, there's ministry. There's something you can do in every place that you go throughout the day, and you can do it for the kingdom of God. You may not walk into Walmart to wanting to talk about Christ, but if you walk in there and God moves on you, you go tell that person that Jesus loves them, you may think it's foolish. But I'm going to tell you, it says in the Bible that the foolish things that we see can be the wise things that he sees. A teacher meaning a master, a scholar. Jesus taught by miracles. Paul taught by reasoning. A teacher builds up foundations laid by apostles and prophets in order to establish the saints and give them roots. We need a teacher. We need to know this word of God. As much as I love to run, as much as I love to shout, as much as I love to jump and rejoice for him, we need to know the word. And we need to know that in the word is life. And we need to know that when the word begins to speak life, it speaks to us and we can give that life to someone else. come across this little 
thing, but we have five senses, right? We've got ears, we've got eyes, we've got nose. We have hands and we have lips. We have ears for hearing, just as an apostle would. We have eyes for seeing, just as a prophet will. We have a nose for smelling, just as an evangelist does. We have a finger for pointing, just like a pastor. And we have a mouth as a teacher. When we begin to speak the word of God, it can change the atmosphere that you're in. It can change the circumstances that are around you. But we have to begin to speak God's word. It's not just those that's standing on the platform, that's standing behind a sacred desk, reading from God's holy word. It's not just up to them to preach this word. You may not preach it or you may not speak it the way that that some of us do, but God has given you a mouth that you can be used for the speaking of God's word. Manifestation gifts. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are not to be ignorant. 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. Not to be neglected. 1 Timothy 4 and 14. But to desire, 1 Corinthians 12 and 31, and to be stirred up, 2 Timothy 1 and 6. We're to know about these gifts. We're to know about motivational gifts. We're to know about ministry gifts. We're to know about manifestation gifts. Gifts. Because that's the only way that we'll know they can be activated in our life. If these young people never realize that the power and the, the, the power of God and the Holy Ghost can move in us, if they don't ever realize that, then they'll never grasp a hold of it. The gift will never be operable in their life. But if we'll begin teaching, if we'll begin telling them the power and the anointing of God, we will no longer have to worry about the stories of yesterday, but we will have stories of today. Hallelujah. I said we will no longer have to worry about the stories of yesterday, but we will begin to have stories of today. I love my heritage, and I told them the other night, I love that Pentecost is in my blood. There's nothing that I would change for that. There's nothing that I would like to take back or change growing up as a child and hear my grandfather pray in his bedroom. There's nothing that I would change in this world. Um, But I'm going to tell you something. If we don't let our young people see the motivational gifts if we don't let them see the ministerial gifts that are that is in this place if they don't know about it they're not going to be able to operate in it and if they can't operate in it then guess what the next generation is not going to know what to do when God begins moving they're going to say what is this when God begins speaking to them they're going to say whose voice is this but I'm going to tell you something we need to know that the gifts are still alive and well in the church tonight is still alive and well and operable in the church that we have today. We're to know about them. We're to desire to, to desire them. We're to encourage ourselves within them. To stir up the gift that is within you. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you got a gift. And the only way you're going to use that gift is if you stir it up. Stir up the gift that God has birthed you with. 
Stir up the gift that God has placed within you. There's three key things about the manifestation gifts of the Holy Spirit. Revelation, power, and vocal. Revelation gifts, wisdom. The gift of the word of wisdom is the God-given ability to perceive spiritual wisdom from God when it is needed. Knowledge, the gift of the word of knowledge is the God-given ability to receive from God by revelation facts and information which are human, humanly impossible to know. Discerning of the spirits. The gift of discerning of the spirits is a God-given ability to recognize what spirit is behind different manifestations or activities. The gift also includes of God-given abilities to change or to cope with spirits. Power to do. Faith. The gift of faith is a God-given ability to, to believe for the impossible. Healings. The gift of healing is, is given to impart healing for the physical body of the septic times. Miracles is an ability to perform the impossible. The gift of faith usually pertains to the matter of word. The gifts of healings portrays to the natural word. And the gift of miracles portrays to the spiritual word. A vocal gift. Tongues. The gift of tongues is a God-given ability which enables a believer to speak in a language which he does not know. Interpretation. The gift of interpretation is a tongue that is given from God an ability to bring forth the known tongue, a message to the church which was given to the church through the gift of tongues. Prophecy. The gift of prophecy is the ability to speak forth an inspired message from God. Prophecy is not the same as preaching. But prophecy is a direct word given to a specific person at a specific time to be spoken in a specific place. We need a move. That's all my printed notes. I call it chicken scratch now. The other night, I read a little bit of this last Wednesday. Some of you might get a repeat. The Lord woke me up about 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I was telling some of them at church the other night, and I said, uh, I write more now than I've ever wrote in my life. And uh, and I, I know why, Brother Jade, is because I have more of a desire to do his will now than I ever have in my life. So the Lord woke me up about 3 o'clock in the morning. I sat down at my desk, and I began writing. This is what I begin to write. We don't need to wander any longer. We need a move. We know that God has promised us a place. The Spirit of the Lord has always been from the very beginning. And has always done what he said he would do. If we walk in with an attitude that it's just another service, then that's what it's going to be. It's just another service. Don't wait 
Till the next youth service, don't wait till the next time you feel God's presence. But know that now. Don't make another excuse. You can't do it yourself. Stop letting the devil walk in with you and destroy and distracting you from your greatest victory. We always stop pushing right before our greatest victory. It's time that we push and take a stand that I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to make up my mind that I'm going to be filled with his anointing. It's not an option. Don't wait till your friend asks you to go to the altar or to pray or to be the last one looking around saying, should I lift my hands? Praise him. I really want to praise him, but I don't know what everyone else will think. There is something about when you begin to praise him, it changes the atmosphere that you're in. It's not something fake, and it's not just a sound to tickle your ears, but it's a sound that literally changes the atmosphere that you set in. God is looking for a group right now, not next week, not six months from now, not tomorrow, but right now, he's looking for a congregation. He's looking for a group of young people that will begin to stand and take a stand against everything else in the world. Uh, just because uh, you, you want to be popular, you can still take a stand and have popularity on your side because I'm going to tell you, the most popular person that I know is Jesus Christ. Uh, and I can read a whole book about him. There's not too many people out there that, that has a, com a complete book written written before he started and after he started. I'm going to tell you something. When you begin to take a stand and you say that I'm going to be separate, I want to be different, I want to be different than those all around me, God will begin to use the gifts in you. He's looking for someone that is pure and not afraid. He's looking for someone that desires his anointing and to be different. Some people don't like to be separated. Some people don't like I'm going to tell you separate me. Let me be different. I'm not ashamed of my heritage. It's because of my heritage that things begin to come out of me. There's been a gift given to each one of you at birth. And the only way that it will come out is if you desire it. If you desire that gift to move. How many has seen miracles? How long has it been since you've seen your last miracle? How long has it been since the power of God has come in and hushed the congregation that you've been in? We need testimonies of today. I love hearing the old people get up and testify. But I so desire To hear my niece get up and begin to testify. This is what God is doing in my life. This 
is what God is doing in my life right now. We can read scriptures all day long of miracles. We can read scriptures all day long of miracles. We, we know that there was a lame man that had nobody to put him into the pool when it was trouble. We know there was a man that sat outside the temple. Miracles all through the Bible. We all know the story of Daniel and the lion's den. We all know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We all know the story of David and Goliath. Stories that we can read about over and over and over. What's the story that you've got? What's the story that you've got? That God delivered me from a life of sin. And He gave me salvation. And He gave me a reason to rejoice. He gave me a reason to come into God's house on a Friday night when I'm sure I had something else to do. He gave me a reason to say, you know what? I'm going to purpose myself. I'm going to go to His house. I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to give Him everything. I'm going to. I'm not going to lay anything. I'm going to lay everything down at His feet because I know if I show up expecting Him to move, then He's going to move in the midst that I'm in. Not because I'm anybody, but simply because I made up my mind when I walked through them doors that I was going to feel the Holy Spirit move in this place. God's no respect a person. He doesn't matter how wealthy you are or how poor you are. There's still a gift that he's birthed in you. There's still a gift. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. There is a gift that is birthed in you, and he's longing for it to come out. I told Brother Jane, I texted him the other night, and I said, I don't plan on being the only one preach. I said, I said, you better get ready. I said, I've never tag team preached with you. But I want you to come up here and obey the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you, I think he said when we was back there, there's four churches represented here tonight, if not more. We can't do this alone we can't do this alone but it's when we begin to come together and say fellowship does not mean all the fellas on my ship But fellowship simply means that we come together and we all get in the boat together and we all begin praising God together and we all begin worshiping God together and we realize that each one of us has a ministry to do in the kingdom of God. Because it's much greater than what we see right here inside this, this city or wherever you may be from. It's much greater than that. Our eyes can't see the full spectrum that God wants us to see. But he wants us to grab our brother and say, you know what? I'm going to raise up your hand because you raised up my hand and I'm going to push you to preach the gospel and we're going to go overcome the demons and devils that are trying to come against the young people in this day and hour. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Lord God, we come before you, Jesus, and we thank you that you're calling us to action tonight. Lord, I thank you for the unity in this house, Lord Jesus. I thank you that your scripture says 
that it is good and it is pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity, that it is like the anointing that flowed from Aaron's beard down to the hem of his garment. And Lord God, I thank you that unity brings that anointing. Jesus, Jesus, we're here for you tonight. Amen, amen. Hear me tonight. I didn't have anything to say. About five minutes before service, I wrote just a few things down. Brad touched all over it, but the Bible says this in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and chapter 6. Moses Deuteronomy is Moses' message to the people. It's just a big old sermon. And he reminds them in Deuteronomy 4 and Deuteronomy 6. He is specifically in Deuteronomy 6, he says, Your sons and your daughters, they're going to grow up and say, What is the testimony? What is the testimony of our people? And he said, you teach, he even commands them in Deuteronomy 4, it, you need to teach your children what, about what God has done. And he, he begins to tell them in Deuteronomy 6, tell them that we were captives, but now we're free. And that while we were yet in Egypt, that God performed signs and wonders. Brad's already touched on it. I say it again. I thank God for my heritage. Me and my brother here, we raised in a pastor's home. I thank God for that. Thank God for godly sets of grandparents on both sides. I thank God for that. I thank God for the stories that my grandmothers and my grandfathers could tell. I thank God for that. Many of you may have the same story. But hear me. Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 2 that there's a prophet. Brother Josh, he's a mighty man. His name's Elijah. Let me do something. You know, my people know I gotta have something to throw at somebody or something. Also knows what's coming. Pastor does this all the time. It's mantle time around here in PTC. is a prophet he's a man of God but he has an apprentice Elijah since I'm talking about Elijah come help me and Elijah listen Elijah's the man not this Elijah but he can Elijah called fire down from heaven Elijah prophesied that there would be a drought he prophesied an end to the drought. Mighty man of God. He didn't pick up Elisha until after all these things had already happened. So Elisha's just tagging along with him. I'm sure Elisha has heard of all the things that God has done through Elijah. He's heard the testimonies. But Elijah says, listen, I'm going home now. This is what Elijah turns to Elisha and says, What do you want? What do you want? And Elisha says, I want a double portion of your anointing. What he was saying is, Imagine this say, Grandma, Grandpa, I thank God for what you had, but I want more. Mom and Dad, I thank God for what you have, but I want more. Elijah says, you've asked for a hard thing. Understand this. Do you, have you ever seen a more strenuous attack on a generation than you see right now? Never. 
And do you know why? It's because what God is wanting to anoint this generation with is a hard thing. Hear me, it's a hard thing. But Elijah says, Elisha, if you see me when I go, you'll receive. Here comes Elisha. He's grieved. The Bible says he tore his garment. And he says, there goes my father. that I love there's been so many saints go home to be with the Lord I, I just in the last four or five years generals of the faith my church has heard us preach this and there's mantles all over the ground waiting for you young people you young adults to pick them up and this is what I love Elisha picks up the mantle he goes to the very same river they just crossed. You do me a favor, just swing that thing. He swings the mantle. He smotes the water. And he says this, Where is the God of Elijah? Hear me tonight, I'm done. Not a Pentecostal, I'm done. Like a Baptist, I'm done. On time. I will be on time. I'm done. Why is it so important that Elisha's... Remember, Elisha didn't see the fire fall. He wasn't with Elijah in the cave. He'd only heard testimonies about it. And what Elisha was saying in that moment is, God, I've heard about you, but show me who you are. God, my grandparents, my parents, uh, my pastors, they tell me that you are real, uh, but show me who you are. Listen, young people, uh, if you'll come to these altars uh, and say, God, show me who you are. Show me who you are. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Call me into your ministry. Hear me. He'll show you. Uh, the psalmist said, I can say I have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. I'm telling you, uh, there's no more going back. Uh, we're not going to back to how it was. Uh, we can honor what God has done, uh, but we're moving forward. And here was the testimony they gave when Elijah crossed the Jordan River. They said, the God of Elijah rest with Elijah. Understand. Moses said, tell your children. But Elisha said, show me. Show me. Young people, I know what it's like to run from the call of God. I know what it's like to be distant from God. We all do. We, we've been there. Trust us. When your parents say, I've been there, they've been there. But understand this, you can come up front tonight and just say, God, show me. Show me. Show me. So let me challenge you young people tonight. No matter what church you're in, and you say, I hear about how good God is and I see people praise and I see people worship. I see people speak in tongues. I, I see what God is doing in my pastors and my youth pastors and, and my children's pastors. I see what God is doing, but I want to know what that's like. Uh, Elisha never saw the fire fall, uh, but he said, show me. So will you come tonight? Young people, if you're under the age of uh, 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 25, I want you to come up here tonight. You beat everybody here. Congratulations. Show me. Pastors, parents, mothers and fathers, come, come. I want you to stand behind them. Leaders, stand behind them. I trust the men and women of God in this house. Come, I'm asking you to come. Parents, stand behind them. Can I ask 
ask the parents just to pray for a moment as you're coming. Can you just pray? Leaders, can you just pray for a moment? Young people, young people, Christianity, Pentecost is not a religion. It is not a religion, it's a relationship. It's not just even a relationship, it's an experience. And let me tell you tonight, it doesn't matter where you've come from, what you've done, how bad you've been, what your parents have done to you, what your grandparents, what your aunts or uncles or your cousins, doesn't matter your background. You can ask God to show you tonight, and He will. So let me ask this tonight. If you're going to ask God, show me, are you willing to see? As Brother Brad said, those gifts are only gifts if they're being used. If you have a gift and never give it, it's not really a gift. So are you willing to see? tell you, I can point to the young people I know and there's ministry. There's ministry on Marie's life. There's ministry on Emily's life. There's ministry on Carly's life. There's ministry on Emma's life. There's ministry on Maddie's life. There's ministry on Elijah's life. There's ministry on Lexi's life. I I, I don't know all your names. I don't know where you come from but there's ministry on your life. There's a call of God on your life. And I will ask you, I tell our young people all the time, if you will step out and get uncomfortable, get a little vulnerable, God will meet you there. So can you raise your hands? Young people, raise your hands. You say, I don't want to raise my hands. This is part of being uncomfortable. Raise your hands. Parents and leaders, I want you to find a shoulder to put your hand on and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, Brother Brad, help me out. In the name of Jesus, authority in the name of Jesus strength in the name of Jesus gifts callings in the name of Jesus let anointing begin to flow oh come on young people say show me show me show me show me you can say oh I've already had experience pastor oh let me tell you there's so much more there's so much more show me God show me who you are in the name of Jesus Thank you for watching the service with us today and being a part of it. We ask that you stay in touch with us. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. And we'll see you again soon. We love you. So does God.